What's up, Maridisas, and happy Monday. This is Kian Sobani. I hope you guys are enjoying the international break. Lots of Real Madrid players involved in that. And it's all covered on the website. Go to managingmadrid.com. You'll find reports on Fran Garcia, Danny Carvajal, Jose Lu, uh, Rodrigo, Vinicius, Fede Valverde, Aurelion Chumeni, Eduardo Camavinga. Tomorrow, Jude Bellingham, a big game against Italy. You get the picture. It's all over on managingmajor.com. You'll also find plenty of features. Uh, Siddharth Ram Sundar just dropped a piece about Chabi Alonso, positionism, relationism, and fractals. And the Managing Madrid Roundtable takeaways from Real Madrid start to the season is also there. A bunch of staff writers pitched in and uh, gave their thoughts. Kind of a reflection on the season so far at the October international break interval. I also have a huge column dropping my 10 observations where I look at tactics and film. That's dropping this week. Keep your eyes peeled for that. And today's clip, what you're about to listen to, is taken from the weekly mailbag. It's from last week's mailbag where Lucas Navarrete and I answered a bunch of questions. And that happens every single week. We take questions submitted through our Discord. And then we post the answers exclusive, exclusively for our members over on patreon.com slash managing Madrid. We also have YouTube memberships available if you prefer that route. It's the same content. It's up to you what you, what you want to choose as your platform. Uh, link is in the show notes. We do that every single week. And this clip is about Hozulu and whether or not we should bring him back, run it back with him uh, next season. And the full episode, of course, is much longer. Uh, and also... On the off chance you listen to this in time, it's currently just after 12 p.m. Eastern. And at 2 p.m. Eastern, which is 8 p.m. CET, I'm doing a Twitter audio space. That's live. It's free. Go on my Twitter, at Kionso, K-I-Y-A-N-S-O. You'll find a link to the Twitter audio space there. And you can hop in, raise your hand, and ask me questions. Turn on your microphone. And I would love to chat with you. I also welcome disagreements and people who want to debate me. These people never actually show up. They just want to do the whole keyboard warrior thing. But just in case you want to join me and disagree with me on something, I'd love to talk to you. So go do that on my Twitter. You'll see the link. And let's just get to today's clip. Without further ado, here it is. And enjoy. Next question. It kind of made me scratch my head. Lasagna on Discord says, Can someone explain to me why Bellingham isn't being hyped up in the Managing Madrid or Churros pod? Bellingham is the best player in the world right now. I need you at Managing Madrid to spread Bellingham propaganda like Barca does with Gavi, who is a mid-player. I need deep tactical analysis into his deep playmaking. Um, Eight goals in eight matches. Give me more Bellingham. I don't know about the true spot, and I don't know entirely about the other episodes here in, in the Managing Madrid podcast. I do know that I don't know what else I can give you about Bellingham, man. I, it's just, I said that it's uh, he's probably one of the f- few signings that made me really excited and and hopeful for the future in quite possibly the last decade. So um, I don't know what else can I say about him. I don't... I don't necessarily agree with the whole he's the world's best player right now. He has an argument. He has a case to be considered among them. I'm not sure if I would label him as the like as the best right now. But uh, most informed for sure. Yeah, and th- th- that's for sure. But uh, again. I don't know what else I can say about him. It's just uh, he's just been uh, it's just been a blast having him around. So at least in in my regard, I don't I don't know what else to tell you really. I'm shocked. I'm insulted at this question. Lasagna. I don't know what else to do. Like beside, we give a monologue on Bellingham every single episode. Um, before the season, before we even signed him, there were multiple podcasts about how great of a signing he would be. 
when we signed him, we did multiple podcasts, how impressed we were before he even played a game. We brought on a journalist from The <clears throat> Athletic who wrote a great article about him. We brought him on and had an entire podcast there about him. He's been amazing. I don't know what else we can say. Um, we we spend a lot of time talking about him and praising him. Um, the other thing, this is this is kind of an aside, but not really. It's kind of nice to have someone who is already has the PR machine because he's British. We haven't had right. a, like we've we've had to fight so much for our players, yeah. you know, trying to convince people that Fede Valverde is one of the best midfielders in the world, or you know, and there's always that meme like, yeah, if. If if he's from Catalonia or Brazil or England, his his value was just way higher. We have someone now from England who it's just effortless. Like the guy has a cult following even outside of Real Madrid. He has the PR machine working for him. It's kind of nice to just have that for once. Um, <laughs> he'll probably win the Golden Boy this year. And I mean, it's it's between him and Musiala, and I think Bellingham is probably going to win it. So he definitely should. I mean, he it would be should. outrageous if he didn't. Yeah, it's nice to have someone with that PR machine behind him now. Um, the next one is from Sly Fly One Twenty Nine on Discord. Sly Fly says, "Hey, Keanu Lucas, I hope all is well. I saw Joselu comment the other day that he's not just on loan, but we have a buy option as well." Do you guys know the amount? And if you do, based on the figure, are you 100% buying him? My understanding is that Real Madrid have a 1.5 million euros option to buy him back, which is definitely very low. And uh, if that's actually the case, and if that's actually the amount, it's it's not even 100%. It's like 1,000%. It's just uh, something you probably execute and trigger right now and, and don't wait for the summer just to maybe boost his confidence and whatever. I think it's just uh, a matter of Real Madrid kind of making sure that the, that the contract with him after ex- executing and triggering that option is reasonable. I don't want to give him like a five-year deal or anything like that, but... You make sure that you give him a two-year, three-year deal, considering that he's already uh, well in his thirties, and, and like it's an it's a no-brainer to me. It's just one hundred percent. You do it, and again, I would probably do it right now, just to increase his confidence. Really, I agree. I agree with that. If I had to decide right now, like to renew him for next year, I would say yes right now. Um, it's no, zero- and it, uh, just to be clear, and if I didn't have to decide right now, and I had like until next year to make a decision, I would pro- probably still give the green light right now, even though obviously he could still suffer like a long term injury and have his career ruined and all that. But I think you can actually increase his confidence and boost his, his confidence if you if you execute the deal and, and and the option right now. So even if I if my my option to buy him permanently expired in. In June, I would probably execute and trigger the option right now. I mean, 1.5 million is just peanuts for for Real Madrid for a player who has already scored what five goals in in one month or something like that. He's been a very valuable piece for Real Madrid. So, I mean, even if my option my option actually expired next summer, I would execute it right now. It's zero risk. It's zero risk. Um, and I've always loved the idea of having. Uh, a veteran striker come off the bench who doesn't mind coming off the bench and can really provide you with valuable minutes and is hungry and he's a maridista, it's a bonus. He's not going to complain exactly, which is yeah. which was you know one of the mm, concerns about other veteran yeah. signings that were under the radar for Real Madrid for a while. With um, those uh, potential signings and rumors where oh. Is this striker going to be happy playing, I don't know, X amount of minutes when they could be playing elsewhere and whatever? Horstel is not going to complain. So uh, it's, uh, as you mentioned, it's zero risk, yeah. 